So it was kind of running late there. I forgot my microphone, but Steve's playing and he went a little long, so it's all good. Covered for me. Good morning. And uh, can you close that door, Ben? There we go. The sun was reflecting off somebody's car. It was blinding me. Uh, and I got it up there, too. Um, but yeah, bright sunny day, uh, beautiful summer weather in April. That's crazy. So I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Um, my father, uh, Andy, and my stepmother, uh, Lori, are visiting uh, the last few days, so it's good to have my dad out here. First time he's been out visiting, so he can talk his ear off later. And uh, uh, we found out that when we have people visiting right now, though, our sewer backs up again. Uh, and the pump is working in the yard, so there must be some other drain issue going on. So pray, pray for us in the parsonage. Uh, I don't like having to have the anxiety of checking the drain every morning and every afternoon and every evening. Um, so hopefully we can get that additional new thing figured out um, and go from there. We're supposed to get new water line run this week, right, Dwight? This week the new line will go in, so that'll, that'll take care of the big leak that's been going into the ground, hopefully. I um, feel like I, oh no, that was it for the house stuff. Um, and then keep me in prayer, my allergies, I think it's allergies, I don't know, I can't tell if it's indoor, outdoor, or what's going on, but my it's just been hitting my eyes this week, so... Uh, struggling a little bit to, to deal with itchy eyes and being able to see. Um, so pray for that, that that clears up finally. Um, Jackie wanted to, to make note for the women. So there'll be like the makeup day for the women's conference is a Saturday where the, they're out downstairs there's a list of the different presentations that all the women thought were the best to, to see again or to see for the first time. So if you can make it on Saturday the 27th, uh, Jackie needs you to sign up uh, if you desire to go to that or be a part of that um, so that she can know how to prepare the food and, and things for that day. Um, if nobody signs up, they'll just, uh, they'll just forego that. So if you are interested in doing that, make sure to check in with her or to sign up so that that uh, can happen and take place. Um, there's a public request program this evening at Grandview Reformed Church in Armour tonight at 7, and there'll be a free will offering for the New Hope Christian Camp out in Platte, so if you're able to make it to that, I encourage you to attend that. I have a note about the annual conference again, just for those who are desiring to register for that, there's a link there to get more information. Um, there's also, um, and this is in the, in the insert today, the evangelism and discipleship part of the AFLC, they do a special night the night before the conference starts called Rekindle the Fire. And so if you're thinking of going to the conference, if you have that Tuesday night open as well, possibly to be there, that's a good event to be a part of. It kind of kicks off the conference really well. I know Jackie and I will be there for it. And then uh, I think we'll do, our, we'll do our, our verse this morning together in just a moment. Uh, are there any other prayer requests or announcements? before we continue with doing our, our verse for the month. I know I got, I got a text this morning from a sister who cares so much about her brother, she wanted to make sure that we didn't neglect his birthday today. And so Aaron is celebrating his birthday this morning, so I'm sure they'll sing happy birthday to him downstairs. And I always feel bad about making, like, either highlighting or not highlighting birthdays on Sundays because they don't always fall on Sundays. And, but when, when the family brings it up, I always make a note to... To say that, so nobody pointed out yours last week, Gene, deliberately. They didn't want to throw you under the bus, but everybody knew it was your birthday. So, um, all right. So we're going to continue. I'll have you rise before we do our call to worship. We'll do our. We will do our verse for uh, Romans 12:2 together. It's in the printed in the announcements for you if you need it, or you can look it up in the Bible. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We continue with our call to worship printed in your bulletin for you. Psalm 4, we read responsively. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Your 
You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. We continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sanctuary that is your presence. We thank you for drawing us together today that we may come together in peace with you and with one another as the world is waging war and beginning to ramp things up as things are falling apart even in our nation. We come to you and put our trust in you, Lord, not in economies or nation states or even uh, local leaders, but in you alone, Lord, that you might lead, guide us, and protect us. In that in that heart, we come to you to worship and praise you this morning that you might minister to our souls and repair and heal our brokenness and that we may be strengthened for your service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Congregation may be seated. Our opening hymn is hymn number 98, Thine is the Glory.
continue with our confession of sin, I invite you to rise as you're able. We can, confession is found on page two in our hymnals. We bow our hearts and minds before the Lord, confessing to him. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, you come. Declaration of God's grace to us today from Isaiah 1, 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skin, sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. And to connect this with our sermon today as well, our faith in Jesus Christ, in his work, is what gives us, through that faith, purity and cleanness. Your sins have been removed, as the word declares, in the Old and New Testament and in the work of Christ. Take that to heart as you are seated. Amen. Continue our service with hymn 97, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Glory to his name. 
my Jesus, still the same. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Continue our service with our readings. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3 beginning in verse 11. While he, this is a beggar that Peter has just healed, while he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by your, our own prayer or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Here ends our Acts reading, and we continue with our reading from the epistles, in this case, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Here ends our epistle lesson. I invite you to rise for our holy gospel text. Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Here ends our gospel lesson. God be praised for his glad tidings. Continue with the confession of our faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page four in your hymnal if you need it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue with our offering at this time. Father, we ask your blessing upon these gifts which we bring to you. Lord, may you multiply them and give us wisdom and knowledge to use them for your name and for your glory, for the encouragement of your saints. May you allow them to go further than normal dollars would, Lord, for the work and service of your name and your work. Heavenly Father, we ask your, you to work in the, the costs related to the, the water problems at the parsonage as well. Lord, may they be minimal. May the work be perfect and excellent. And may, the, may everything just work out, Lord, to be a blessing for the church and for the parsonage. May no further problems be found. And may that be the case in our homes as well, Lord. May you guard and protect the finances of those who love you and, and submit to you and sacrifice for you their time, their talents, and their treasures, Lord. May you, may you give them wisdom in where to invest and wisdom into where to withhold their funds, Lord, that we might not be supporting or participating in anything that is evil, but that we may only be doing things and supporting things that which are good. And we think especially of our families, especially the young families, but also the interconnectedness of our families here in our church and in our community, Lord. May you bless them, may you protect them, guard them as the times get more and more evil. And Heavenly Father, just uh, help us to feel that protection around those whom you love and those who love you. Heavenly Father, as, as Iran has attacked Israel openly now, Lord, we pray for uh, Israel and the Jews to have wisdom and understanding on how best to proceed in self-defense. We ask that you bless all those who are acting in godly justice and acting in self-defense, those who uh, support and follow cultures and teachings of life and, and promoting goodness in the world, Lord, that they might overcome all cultures of death, 
all cultures that bring suffering, all cultures that produce and promote hate. We think especially of Islam, which proclaims to be a religion of peace, but in action and in daily activity is indeed the opposite. And so, Lord, thwart your enemies as you've done and shown throughout Scripture and throughout history, and bless and guard those who are clinging to you for peace and wisdom and understanding. Lord, we ask your blessing upon all the young little ones that we hear in our service, Lord. We love them dearly, and we ask that you be with the the mothers-to-be as well, and be with those who are longing to, to be mothers or to, to, pro, to produce and promote life wherever they can and however they can. And be with those who have teenagers, Lord. Give them patience and help our teenagers to trust and put their faith in you and to sacrifice for you as well and to serve you and, and reveal to them the path for their future. Give them peace about what they should do with a future that is uncertain. And then be with parents and grandparents as we model and, and, and live for our kids and our families. We thank you this morning for Aaron's birthday, Lord, but we thank you especially for the thoughtfulness of a sister and the brothers and sisters that we joke together when birthdays happen and we, we celebrate sometimes not openly and we don't always like to maybe have the spotlight on us, but the connectedness that binds us together, that we celebrate life, that we celebrate one another is a spirit of goodness, a spirit of unity. And may you protect that in all your churches across America and the world this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, we lift up any of who are currently sick and suffering. We ask that you be with them, be with, continue to be with Rosemary's eye issues, Lord, and help her to, uh, thankful that she has a contact lens that helps her to see better now, Lord, and, and be with all those, the things that we don't even know. We ask that you provide healing where necessary, provide peace and patience in those who are slowly declining, and may they continue to have their wits about them and enjoy and find purpose in each day that you give them. And whatever remains, Lord, on our hearts or minds, there's too many things to list each day and each week, but we ask you, Lord, to provide your blessing upon us as we reveal to you in this moment of silence our prayers, our joys, our sufferings we give to you in this moment. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your faithfulness, knowing that you hear our prayers, and we may not always get answered in the way we desire, but you do always provide an answer, and you are always there for us. And we thank you in that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue with our hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, number 507.
pray with me as we begin. Heavenly Father, bless us as we examine your word for us today. Bless us with understanding and also bless us with knowing how best to apply it in our lives, in our conversations, in our actions, in our thoughts even. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I kind of had a double title today. I was going to do Seeing is Believing. And then I ended up with the one you have, which is faith produces, and then dot, 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 because faith produces many things that we're going to look at today. It produces purity, it produces life, produces healing, it produces joy. Faith in Jesus produces a multitude of things, and all of those things are things that we would call good and holy. Nothing that Jesus and faith in Jesus produces is evil. Nothing can be called bad or not good that comes from God. But seeing is believing because it's connected a little bit, and I didn't go that route because that was similar to what we had last week. This, our Luke text that we begin in today is similar to last week's where Thomas coming back and seeing Jesus. This is the first time Thomas wouldn't have been present in this Luke, the Luke account here where Jesus has appeared to the disciples and he's saying, look, it's me, I've risen. This is just after the resurrection and he's come, the, the, the other disciples had just finished coming back and they were talking about how Jesus had been talking with them on the road to Emmaus and, and the disciples that, the apostles that were in Jerusalem were like, what, what are you talking about? This can't be real. And then Jesus reveals himself and stands among them to show them. And, and in their case, they got to see and to touch and, and then it's, it's, it's significant that he even takes food and, and eats in front of them because there's, there's a, a heresy that came up in the church later that, that maintains that Jesus is not God and man, but just a God alone. And in this case, Jesus was still in his resurrected form. He had a body. He was a man again as well. He had not ceased to be one of us. He had not ceased to have that connection with humanity. And he takes and, he's eat, and he eats with them before them. But it even speaks to the fact that even when we see something, it can be so marvelous, it can be so wonderful, it can be so hard for us to understand. When we see Jesus or we see his work in our life, it's easy for us to still disbelieve and doubt and and to put it aside as like, no, there's got to be some catch here or something. Even after touching him and and touching his feet, seeing his hands and feet and, and, and touch me and see, he says in verse 39, A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have, Jesus says. And then he shows them. And and they still disbelieved for their joy and their marveling. So even in our joy, not just in our sorrow, even in our in our when things are blessed and the, the, the best thing they could have ever had happen, Jesus came back and he fulfilled everything that he had taught them. And they were they were they were in shock, basically. Had been I mean I can't imagine again, as I've said in the previous couple of sermons, they had been there's no emotional roller coaster greater than going from celebrating on, on, on Holy uh, Palm Sunday and then proceeding and, and seeing your teacher and your leader and your brother dying and suffering horribly and then seeing him put in a grave and people mocking and spitting on him and then an, a day of, of trying to reconcile all that together with your peers on that Sabbath day. And then Sunday he appears and it's, it's a wonder that none of them just up and had a heart attack. The shock of it must have been amazing, such that they were marveling at it. But the faith in Jesus, the trust, they were his he was establishing a foundational trust and faith in him that would produce our Bible, that would produce the works that we see recorded, that would see a faith that that led people to maintain that passing on that witness through generation after generation of people gathering and writing things down and sharing, these are the things that Jesus did that we have faith in, so that you may be full of love and joy and peace and all the fruit of the Spirit. We have these things because they were recorded for us and because he did these things and they were observed and witnessed. If it was in the present age, there would be a whole bunch of TikTok reels and, and YouTube videos out in public of Jesus and the works he was doing. It would be viral moments and we'd be watching it on our devices. But this was before all that and we've had to have it passed down through the generations. 
We'll skip ahead a little bit to verse 47 or 46. I'll start in. Thus Jesus says to it, thus it says, it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day, rise from the dead. Why? Verse 47. That repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And we'll revisit this again when we get to our Acts passage. We're going to do our first John one in a moment. But what is the whole point of Jesus and the work he did and the faith that if, when I say the faith, the trust, the belief we have, it always has to be connected with the object of Jesus' work. It's not our faith. It's not like our work that, that we trust in him. We trust in him because like I trust that chair when I plop down on it, that the 100-year-old chair is going to hold me up and that I'm not going to be the one to break it and be guilty about it. There's a trust there. I don't even think about it. It's there all the time. It's faithful every time. It's doing its purpose. Well, God is that chair just to the infinity He's doing his purpose that he provides repentance and forgiveness of sins and that he wants that proclaimed to all nations. And again, that's why we have our Bibles, that people sacrifice their lives, their time, their energy to record and to pass on. And then even in our present time, and I'm so thankful that we had some who have been sharing their personal testimonies of like, what has God done in your life? How is he working in your life? What is he getting you through? That doesn't always mean the successes or the joys and and, and, you know, maybe the joy of a, a new baby or the, the joy of a new job or the joy of starting a new career, maybe opening a new daycare soon. You know, well, not maybe, ho- definitely opening a new daycare soon, right? We, want, we, we celebrate in those things, but we also, you know what, we celebrate and we rejoice at funerals because of the person that knew God. We rejoice at funerals and, and bad circumstances as well, such as the garbage going out of the par- parsonage. We rejoice because, you know what? We're not alone. We turn, we look left and right, and we see different people show up. Different people come alongside us, and they help us in those, whether, whether it's a, a miscarriage, even when we hold those things to ourselves and we don't share our troubles, there's still somebody there with you, a spouse, a mom, a dad, a brother or a sister. Or we lose a job, or, or somebody dies, or, or something tragic happens. Or God's people are there as well. And that's because God's faith, faith in Jesus, the faithfulness of God and to his people, produces, again, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The spirit of God is present where his people are, where he is working. And the contrast is true as well, and we'll get to that in a moment. As, but let's jump to 1 John chapter 3. We'll look at a couple things from there as well, tying our scriptures together. Verse 3, specifically, we should take joy in in our hearts. Everyone who thus hopes in him, who hopes in Jesus, purifies himself as he is pure. That's why I chose the Isaiah passage this morning, our declaration of grace. Because it's Jesus who can take us as dirty, blemished lambs, and he can make us whole and perfect and clean. It's the power of faith in Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that allowed Peter to heal a beggar who was lame. But that's not the full thing. Yes, he can purify us. He can make us whole. He can make us leave here this morning with guilt-free and shame-free. And and, and then that heals our hearts. It heals our minds. It makes us whole. It removes any any issues mentally or, or even physically sometimes. But the reality is that's still limited in what we will get one day. Because the beggar that Peter healed, he's dead. We don't have him here. We can't bring him in here and interview him. And each one of us, as we go out today, we might be feeling great, might be enjoying the sunshine and the weather, but we, we too will die. We'll have ailments. We will eventually pass away. But our hope is in the work of Christ that he rose, he ate with his disciples, he had a new physical body. God has the power to do that then, and he'll do that in the future when he returns and brings pure justice and righteousness that is where our hope is. Our hope is in him which purifies us and will give us a new body one day and a new world in which there will be no longer any sin or death or suffering. No longer any hatred. And John writes that leading into the next part which is significant and, and it, it, it gives us tools for understanding, okay, where is God and where God is not? around us, whether it's in our homes or whether it's in our communities or in the things we see online. 
Verse 4 says, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. What are some things that are sinful? Hatred, war, confusion, death, suffering. We can even say anxiety. I'll be careful with that one because we all do doubt and suffer sometimes. But all these are things that will not be present in heaven. There will be no such things any longer. And again, because wherever God is, wherever his faithfulness is, wherever his spirit is, you have the fruit of the spirit, which I've read through already. But what does faith and trust in God produce? It produces the strength and confidence of David to face Goliath. If David did not have that confidence that his God was great and mighty, he would not have been able to stand up boldly to, David, to Goliath with the confidence knowing that his God is greater than that enemy whatever enemy it may be in your life as well. And wisdom alone comes from the Father in heaven. And unity, wherever there is unity, we see the Spirit of God. But right now, the disunity throughout our nation, throughout the world, the, the, the hatred that is bred amongst the Palestinians to their children, teaching them to hate and call to hate Jews from a young age, and not just Jews, but anyone who is not Islamic. Don't be fooled. When the Jews are gone, they will go for others. That is practicing sinning. Lawlessness, it is anti-God. It is against God. There's only hope in repentance and them changing and learning the truth. But there's other sins as well. Are we practicing lying? Are we practicing adultery? Are we practicing coveting? Are we practicing stealing? Are we saying that these things are okay? If we are, then we are not of God. That is lawlessness, not godliness. Verse 5, you know that Jesus appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. There will be none of those things, those wicked things, those evil things that I've mentioned. No one who abides in Jesus keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has seen him or known him. And then John writes, little children, let no one deceive you. John is writing to fellow believers. He's writing to the church. Let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Again, that's why I hammer home those, those, those uh, fruit of the Spirit. It'll be one of our verse memorizations later in the year, so if you want to start on it now, you can. But if we are practicing and meditating on and focusing on being loving and being joyful and being peace, having peace and being patient and kind and good and faithful and gentle and self-controlled, and if we're encouraging one another in those things as well, then we are practicing righteousness. We wrap up here in Acts chapter 3. Peter is speaking. He's healed the beggar. And he's sharing the gospel truth with people for one of the first times. He's appealing to the, he's talking to a Jewish audience here. So he's talking to people who, who know God and have God's holy scriptures from the Old Testament, but they don't know Jesus. And he even says, you know, he's, 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 he's making it very clear who God is. He's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers. Why does that matter? Because our God is eternal. He's not one that's here today and gone tomorrow. He's not one we make with our hands and set on a shelf. He is the God that was there in the beginning. He created everything and he created us. He has perfect authority and power. And and Peter is spelling that out clearly, that they might not deny who the God is we're speaking of. And he says clearly, Glory, this God, our God, has glorified his servant, Jesus. And then he indicts us. He said, you delivered him over and denied in the presence of Pilate when Pilate had decided to release him. Us as Christians or as Jews or, or people in general, the, huma the, human, the human condition, humanity itself... The Roman authority, the, the governmental authority at that time examined Jesus and declared, this man has done nothing wrong. He is innocent. I do not want to execute him. I want to let him go. You can choose to have me execute Jesus, innocent and good, the one who was loving and pure, the one who healed people, or you can have me release the one who was a barbarian, one who promoted death, one who was riotous. And given that choice as people, we would have been the same in that crowd. We chose death. What does that look like today? People who support Hamas are choosing Barabbas. They're choosing death. 
People are saying death to America in, in Michigan lately. They're choosing death. That is not God. There's nothing of God in that. There's nothing of Jesus in that. Those who are shouting their abortions, they're choosing death. It's our human nature to chase after these things. These things are evil and wicked. And Peter is calling us out, do not be ignorant because you will die in your ignorance. On the day of judgment, anybody listening to Peter here, if they reject what Peter is saying, they are, there's no excuse before God. Their only sentence is hell forever. They have decided. They have made their choice. Peter goes on to say, you denied the holy and righteous one. You asked for a murderer to be granted to you. You killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. And then here's a key thing as well. To this we are witnesses and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. Faith produces health. Do you feel sick mentally? Or do you know somebody who's sick mentally? If you aren't giving them faith in Jesus, if you aren't bringing Jesus to them, you're doing nothing for them. That is the only thing that will produce health. Worldly counseling or doing certain practices and habits might be helpful, but it will not heal. The witness of God proclaims that throughout history. The people who overcome those things, physical things, mental things, whatever their burden might be, the ones who truly have overcome them are the ones who are claiming, this is what God has done for me. The ones who proclaim, look what Jesus has done for me. Some of the best testimonies come from some of the people that were the worst, the worst addicts, the worst abusers, the worst empty and broken people. When they submit to God and his faith heals them, they become the greatest witnesses. It's good for us to reflect often on what has God done for us. I'm compiling a long list of different things that are happening through us in our ordeals here. Now granted, none of them are, are super huge in, in general, but God has worked through all of them to get us to this day. We survive, survive storms, we survive emotional troubles, we survive burdens physical and otherwise. Part of it is because of God himself and part of it is because God is working through his people to come alongside of us and to help us delight in, in our youngest ones and help us delight in our, and celebrate our oldest ones, which we'll do in a couple weekends here as well, honoring the heritage of those who forged the path ahead of us, those who stood as examples taking care of this building for over 100 years, taking care of the property for decades, providing Christian education. May we never be lax in doing those things, encouraging faithfulness in God. Acts continues with Peter saying, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. These are how we should speak to other people when we're sharing with those who aren't believers or those who are maybe not following Jesus and following after, those who are practicing sin. If we know them in our lives, this is how we should approach them. We know you acted in ignorance, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. And so what do we do? What do we charge our friend who's, who's struggling with addiction? Or what do we charge our friend who's sinning in another way, perhaps? Whatever those sins may be. Or even ourselves. The only charge, the only thing we should do is at, call them to repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Their sins will not go away if the judge turns a blind eye to their sinfulness. Their sins will not go away if you keep enabling them in their sinfulness. All it will do is cost not only them, but others. The consequences will be multiplied if we don't nip it in the bud. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. Are you struggling with hatred in some area? Are you, are you confused about something? Are you, are you desiring death? Are you wanting and welcoming death? Are you suffering in some way? Are you anxious about something? Take it to God and, and repent. It won't make things necessarily disappear at that moment, but either miraculously, immediately, or over time, as you draw close to God, all those things will fade away. The life of the, the one walking with God is just such a great example, such a great life. 
and we can't do it on our own. David couldn't go out and face Goliath without the faith he had in God, without the reality that our God is living, he's active, he's powerful, and he is willing and ready to fight alongside of us. And at the same time, be careful that we're not fighting our own battles and not the ones that God is calling us to. God has placed each of you in a different place, a different position in society, a different position in the the community. And each of you has a different audience in which you are supposed to be proclaiming his truth. May you have the strength and confidence of David to stand up and proclaim for the people under your care, whether it's your family or whether it's your coworkers or your students, to proclaim to them the truth of Jesus, that that they need to repent of whatever sinful thing they're doing because God says it's wrong to steal from your classmate. We don't just say it's wrong to steal from your classmate or it's wrong to steal from your brother, but we need to say God says it's wrong to do whatever it is. If we don't connect it with God, then you end up with the morally depraved society we have, which has said we don't need God, and it's getting proven that we do. And in that regard, our prayers and my prayers are such that may God remove his blessing from those who are evil and are practicing sin, that they might repent before it is too late and before it hurts those who love God. Why again? Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. I will never stand up here and proclaim that God is coming soon. You know, I'm not going to put a time on it, but things are getting awful. And things are ramping up in ways that are unprecedented in different ways. Many things will come to an end in the near future, whether it's all of eternity or not. I will never say, I cannot say, only God knows. But lean on God for times of refreshing so no matter what evils come upon us as our nation crumbles or as the world burns, we may still have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon us. Help us, as we see storms around us, help us to cling to you and rely on you even though you seem to be sleeping in the boat Lord we know that you are there and that you have power over the wind and the waves you have power over the evil in the world you have power to sustain the good and promote encouragement you have power over our hearts our minds our souls may we trust you in that power and may your faithfulness in us bleed over so that we may have faithfulness not only in you but in one another who trust in you Lord, help us to find and seek one another who are in your body, that we may lean on one another, refresh one another, and that we may be seeking those who are lost, that we may join with them in celebrating their redemption one day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service continues with our closing hymn, Oh, Be Careful, Little Eyes. Number 365. As we sing that, and it's kind of, I know it's a children's hymn, it's easy, maybe we kind of write it off, but just be mindful of what it's teaching and and it's teaching the opposite of practicing sin it's teaching practice goodness protect your eyes protect your hands protect your feet your tongue keep these things in mind and especially teach it to our children what you see oh be careful little eyes what you see for the father up above is looking down in love oh be careful little eyes what you see oh be careful little ears what you hear Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. 
be careful, little tongue, what you say. Oh, be careful, little tongue, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little tongue, what you say. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Careful little hands, what you do? For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little tongue, what you do? Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go? Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go? For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little feet, where you go. I invite you to rise as we close out our service with our Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his almighty and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God from who? all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly host praise father son and holy ghost amen go in peace and serve the lord